Hello, my name is Rodrigo, I'm a Cisco Tech Engineer from the Security Solutions team. This video will show you the points that you need to consider to have a smart licensing working smoothly in your environment, as well as guide you through a step-by-step -step methodology that will help you overcome common queries that might arise when using licensing on i3.x versions. So, without further to say, let's get started on this journey of hands-on learning. The first point that we need to consider is that starting 3.x version there were changes within the licensing framework. If you are in a nice 2.x version and planning to go towards one of the newest versions, you need to consider the migration of license that is required for you to do it. Please review this documentation accordingly and prepare to do the migration changes accordingly. In case you require further help while doing this conversion or have inquiries about the newest licensing scheme, Please contact our licensing tag team so this can be addressed appropriately. Once you perform an upgrade from an i2.x towards one version 3.x, it is important to remark that you will automatically get an evaluation period of 90 days where you can do the conversion and synchronize the ice with the smart account. Depending upon the requirements on your implementation and the flows that your devices need to accomplish, you will need a specific feature. Within this feature, we can correlate that for every flow that an endpoint will be doing on ICE, you will be using one license. Think for example, an user that it is doing authentication via dot .1x. As per the correlation seen in the table, we can see that this user will consume one license essential. Now, if this same user is doing an authentication dot .1x and doing posture assessment, it will use one primary license as this is the final flow that you are implementing with this user. The licenses tools are not cumulative and you will be using one particular license depending upon the flow you are implementing with your users. The device administration licenses are counted depending upon the number of PSNs from where you enable the device admin service. Hence, you will need to get a number of licenses matching the number of nodes with these servers enabled. The VM license covers the Cisco ISVM nodes in both on-prem and cloud deployments. If a virtual appliance is used but your Cisco ICE does not have an active VM license, you will receive warnings and notifications of no compliance licensing consumption until you procure and install a VM license. However, Cisco ICE services are not interrupted. Cisco ICE released 3.x license are managed entirely through a centralized database that is called the Cisco Smart Software Manager, CSSM. The ICE deployment takes internal samples of the licensing consumption every 30 minutes. Licensing compliance and consumption is updated accordingly. If there is a change in the compliance status when the Cisco ICE synchronizes with the SSM server, the last authorization column of the licenses table is updated accordingly, as we can see in this image. Upon the registration of files with the SSM, we have the following values that are described as the following. In compliance, the use of this license is in compliance. Released entitlement, the licenses are ready to use in the feature related to the license type, but none of these have been consumed so far in the ICE environment. In such a scenario, the consumption count for this license is zero. Evaluation. Evaluation licenses are available for use that are 90 days while you upgrade to i3.x or perform a fresh installation from scratch. Auto compliance. This specific licensing has not been acquired or it is not linked with the smart account contained within the SSM server. If your licensing consumption it is auto compliance for 45 days, you will lose all administrative control of the Cisco eyes depending upon the feature that is out of compliance. For instance, if you have out of compliance for only premier licensing, you will lose the capabilities to configure, manage all the features related to this licensing, but you will keep the other dashboard to configure other features not related to this licensing. This will last until you purchase and activate the required license you need. When we talk about the type of registration, we have these three scenarios that we are going to cover. A specific license reservation. This is a model of a smart licensing that will allow you to have a management of licenses without a persistent connection between the ICE and the CSSM server. To use this licensing model, you need to create a license reservation and define the number of licenses you need to reserve. Permanent License Reservation PLR license for ICE has to be requested and approved and for that, please refer to your account manager, sales team, and he, 
She is the person who has to go through the process by requesting approval. Smart license registration. This is the most common type of licensing model used where there will be connectivity between ICE and the CSSM server. Within this video, we will use this license type using connectivity through a proxy. Now, we are going to start with a registration example. Once we have set up that we are going to use a smart licensing registration, we need to go to our Cisco smart account and generate the token that we will input in this field. Next, we need to select a connectivity method. Please select the method in which the iSpan node will have connectivity towards the internet. In my scenario, I will use a proxy that I have configured previously. Select the tier of license that you have within your account and proceed to click on register and wait for the registration to finish. Now you have learned the basic of licensing of ICE. Please contact our support in case you need further assistance with licensing. Thanks for the time you took to watch this video.